Here's how to submit a sample to Speed Diagnostics for processing. First thing you want to do is take your oil sample. There's another video that shows how to take a proper sample. We'll leave the links for that video in the description box below. Once you have your sample, before you put it in the box and drop it in the mail and send it off to the lab, what you want to do is take note of the sample ID number on the bottle. Then you want to go to speeddiagnostics.com and click where it says lab form, which is in the upper right hand corner of the website. Once you follow that link, you'll see a form that needs to be filled out. This form is critical to making sure that your sample gets processed correctly. We need to know the information behind the sample in order to put it in the right context so that our analysis is more accurate. So you want to do is start off with your email address so we know where to send the report. Then that sample ID number from the bottle. That's the critical piece of information. Use that sample ID number from the bottle. Then, okay, how much time is on the sample, either in miles or in hours. Then give some information about the vehicle. If it's a production car, you can use the year it was manufactured, the make of car, the models like that, so we can know what it is. If it's a race car, you can kind of enter in some information about your race car. The, your model doesn't really matter. Your ID, you can either use the VIN number from your car, or if it's your race car, the chassis number or whatever, however you want to describe the car, this is your chance to identify that vehicle or that piece of equipment. The next thing is going to be the description. What's it used for? Is it a daily driver? Is it a track car? Is it a race car? Is it a, a dyno? Is it a boat? What is it? Give us that information so we can have a little bit of better idea about the environment that this engine was operating in that the sample came from. Again, context is critical to making proper analysis decisions. Then what kind of engine is it? Is it naturally aspirated, supercharged, turbocharged? All those little things make a difference. Or if it's not an engine, it can be a transmission. We need to know those kind of things. If it's a transmission, what type of transmission is it? Because an ATF is going to be very different than a CV transmission. So we want to know all of these things beforehand. If you've sampled before, the power of trend analysis. It's another video we did. Again, I'll leave the links in the description box below for the trend analysis video. But knowing what that history is is really important. So if you have history, just list the last sample you have because that way it will all be linked together. What's the name of the fluid? What's the brand of the fluid? If there's a specific type within that, for example, there can be a, say a Mobile One product, but they can have different ones like ESP or extended performance. It's good to know those little bit of details. So list that out and then the viscosity of the oil is very important. And then when a sample was taken, the miles on the sample or the hours on that sample, then the unit age, how old is it? Because we want to know if it's a sample from an existing piece of equipment that's already been broken in, or if this is from a brand new or rebuilt engine or transmission or gearbox so that we know that those wear metals should be higher. There's going to be things like silicon that are typically going to be higher in a brand new build that shouldn't be showing up in an older build. So this is the chance to let us again have more picture of what's going on in the background story from this sample. So when we begin to analyze the results, we have a clearer picture of what we're looking at, not just the data itself. The two of those together is what makes for a really good oil analysis report. So that's the whole point of filling out the form is to get that information. And then if you have your contact information so we can get a hold of you, especially your phone number if we need to have a conversation because sometimes it's easier to talk about it than it is to email back and forth. And then any other extraneous information that you might think is valuable. If you want to add that, you can add that in the notes section, then click the terms and conditions, then just hit submit and you're done. That form will email to you so you know what you sent in. So then the lab has all the information for that sample before it arrives so it doesn't slow down the processing of the sample when it arrives and then we can get back to you with a report hopefully helps you drive with more confidence because in the, the day this is science not speculation thanks for watching